Do you remember this scene in A New Hope where they call in the scanning crew and these two technicians come in with this big black box with the scanning equipment inside of it? Well, I don't need to scan for humans, but I do need some sort of a box in my office that I can put my Epson in to scan documents with. My name is Eric Stribble. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. Alfred backpack hanger in stainless steel and aluminum designed by me holds your backpack, lets you charge your phone, hold your keys. It's an incredibly versatile tool. You can use it anywhere in your home or office. Thanks for those of you who've purchased recently. It really helps support the channel. PCB Way offers online 3D printing and PCB fabrication services. They offer 24 hour production tracking of your project from when you upload your project through the production phase and tracking of the shipment to your door. They also have a large community of projects that you can choose from for whatever kind of project you're working on. Check them out for your next project. Link in the description below. I start this project as I do any design project with a sketch of what I want the thing to look like. So this scanner box gets mounted on the wall and inside of it is my Epson scanner. It's going to fold down to reveal the scanner so that it can be tucked away against the wall uh, vertically when it's not in use. So this is a quick sketch of how the mechanics kind of work and then I do a scale sketch here just so I can get an idea of the proportions. Now to give you some context about this project, my design office is imperial based but not black, more white like the ISB but keeping that OG style from the original movie. For this project I'm using 13 millimeter half inch MDF and you can get this at any local orange big box retailer here in the United States. It's relatively lightweight, easy to work with, and gonna be perfect for this project. I'm not set up for woodworking in my shop in any way, so most of this build is gonna happen in my garage. I'm gonna rant real quick, and someday I'm gonna make a video where I don't talk through the video. Just see so many of those videos out there, and they have tons of subscribers, and so many views, and they're just terrible, because you don't know what's going on. It just frustrates the crap out of me. Uh, but I feel like I need to talk and explain what's going on so the viewers are not shortchanged when they watch my videos. I'm assembling all of this just with glue, with the tight bond, and I am using a brush to distribute the glue to get good adhesion on all the connections. And the main reason for this is, is that I don't want to cover the nail holes, and the nails will get in the way when I route the edges of the box uh, later on in the build. So everything here is just getting glued together, clamped, letting it dry really good, and that should be enough to hold this together. One of the trickier parts of this is the hinge at the bottom where the two boxes fold uh, out of. And so what I do is I cut that on the table saw and here you can see a close up and I actually take a little too much off the box and I end up putting in a little bit of cardboard here to take the thickness up so things can be flush and the hinge can work correct. A lot of the Imperial hardware was pretty hard edged, you know, maybe not super sharp edged. Um, so I'm just using a quarter inch router bit here to round out the edges to keep this in the correct style for that Imperial look and then giving it a nice sand. In the Star Wars Imperial universe, most of the Imperial gear does not have cables, but I do need to get power to this unit and potentially a USB data connection. So I need to make it so that the cables don't get pinched and the cables are a little out of the way. The face of the box is gonna have a raised panel on it with some graphics and you'll see those graphics a little bit later. But 
For the raised panel, I'm gonna use some old uh, acrylic and I'm gonna round over the edges. Very old school here. I'm just using a paper template to get my radiuses because my laser cutter is not big enough to cut this in one piece. So I have to do it by hand. After I sand the corners, I'm gonna sand the surface to rough it up a little bit and I'm gonna paint it with this gray primer. It's Rust-Oleum. I do not recommend this primer ever. I happen to have a can, it's free. Look, at, it just spits everywhere, it's garbage. Don't use Rust-Oleum spray primer in a can. Please, do yourself a favor, don't do it. All right, I need to seal all the MDF edges and here I'm using some thinned out uh, wood glue and then I'm coming back and putting some Bondo on the edges, maybe where things aren't totally flat. And then afterwards, I'm gonna seal the entire outside of the box with some shellac and then prime it with Bin 2 Primer. And now finally, it's gonna get a gray, a very light gray imperial latex finish that I'm spraying with this Wagner power sprayer. Link in the description below. It actually works pretty good and I've started to use it more and more. In the beginning, you saw a sketch of what the graphics look like. And here I am in Affinity Designer laying out all the vector graphics so that I can laser cut them. I don't use any Adobe products in my workflow as I don't believe in that mafioso shakedown monthly style that Adobe has. It's just wrong. I'm using a black illustration board to cut out all the pieces so that I can see what they look like in black. I'm gonna glue down that raised panel with some Gorilla Glue and it looks very imperial. It's very contrasty, but it's too dark for my style in my office. So we're gonna fix that. To fix that, I'm gonna spray the parts with a gray primer. And it's a little bit darker than the gray of the box and it'll give it a little bit of contrast and have it stand out. This is regular, I think, Duplicolor uh, primer that you can buy in any automotive uh, store or most of them. And I'll leave a link in the description as well. I'm using some acetate that I am painting the backside with to get my color for the panels. I've also spray painted some white ones and I'm trying to figure out what white I want for the panels. I could go with super white, you can't really see it here, but I'm going with something that's a little off white and I don't want it to be shiny. I only want the other panels to be shiny. I'm using Super 77 spray mount that I'm gonna put onto that a black illustration board and that way I can stick down the paper and the acetate for the graphics and here you can see what that looks like and I'll do each panel that way so very very simple right I'm not shining light through it it's not like for a movie but this is how you would do uh, stuff like this for a movie in a very simple kind of way if they had to have light behind them then you could make this stuff transparent I'm gonna have some cables on the side of the box to support the bottom box when the scanner is in it. And I'm gonna use these cable supports. I print them on my new bamboo in carbon fiber. I love this printer. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. Highly recommend the printer. Absolutely really nice. Probably gonna replace my Ultimakers soon. I'm gonna use this 16th inch cable and these little cable ties for the cables and I'm gonna screw those into place. And this will give some support, uh, especially with the weight of the scanner. Now I'm also gonna print these carbon fiber finger lock things, and this is what locks the two boxes together. Again, printed on my bamboo. Can't recommend this machine enough. And this is gonna be done very, very simply by having a piece of wood flex when you push in with your fingers to separate the two boxes, and you'll see that demonstrated here in just a minute. 
I've added Imperial logos to all the little details. This is FDM printed with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. That's not too bad for an FDM print. I'm pretty happy with that. There you can see how the locking mechanism works. Let's apply the graphic panels. And since this is going on some latex paint and essentially the panels are paper, I'm just gonna use some white glue, the PVA. And the nice thing about that is that it's positionable, meaning I can slide them around a little bit once I've put them down and get them into the right place. I use a little spacer to help me do that. It's time to mount this thing in my office and I use some toggle bolts and the back side because there's no studs there and there are two studs in the middle and I mount that main unit to the wall and now the box on top of it and then we'll connect the hinge at the bottom and put the cables in for that additional weight support. There you go, that's how that works. And I think even like TK427 would be able to use this contraption if he needed to. Let's install the scanner. Of course, it was never meant to be, you know, mounted in this sort of vertical position. So I've printed out some carbon fiber blocks to kind of hold the scanner in place so that when it gets tipped up, it doesn't bounce around on the inside of the box. And we'll just super glue those in place to hold it and hold the scanner firm. Let's test out the scanner and see how it works. All right, we'll fold it down. That reveals the scanner. I did have to add a piece of tape on the lid to keep the lid shut so that when it gets folded up, it doesn't flop all over the place. Drop my sketchbook in here, just like I would normally. Close the lid, go to the computer, scan. Now, I know what you're all saying, Eric. That scanner box is gigantic and that scanner is tiny. Yeah, you're right. That's because I'm putting this scanner in here. And I didn't have it at the time when I did the build. This is a 10,000 XL large format scanner. And that's why I built the thing oversized so it can house this scanner and I can scan 11 by 17 large scale documents. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Make sure to hit the bell so you get notifications every time I have a new video. Also, don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links in the description below and on the channel page. Rock on. Don't forget to check out the t-shirts and hoodies in the merch shelf below. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.